This episode has been brought to you by Exter. Exter is the sickest brand for life on the go. They provide accessories such as the six card holder wallet, pretty cool in design. They got a Lionel Messi version as well. They do carbon fiber as well. Oh, Ooh. so beautiful. They also have things like backpacks, uh, the grid backpack, which we own, and the duffel bag that we own has come in clutch for every single trip we've ever taken. Fits a lot, including your laptop and other things with secret compartments. Great quality. Mm -hmm. Use code 2AM to save. Next up, we have Perizanthine Coffee by Rare Bird. Mm. Um, one actually interesting thing that I was, because uh, I was doing some research on Perizanthine, I found out that it could potentially lower blood pressure. Oh, really? Yes. That's something unique out of coffee. So that's just one of the many examples of some of the benefit that you would get that caffeine does not offer. Mm. So I think it's a great alternative for people who potentially have higher higher blood pressure, but you're going to get a whole host of benefits by just having a morning cup of joe of mm. pyrazanthine coffee. Try it. And use code 2AM to save. And we cannot forget some of the best products out there. Vital Red Light is providing mm. them. Vital Red Light is the ultimate red light therapy system. Say no more. All you need to do is bathe in it for 10 minutes minimum. I do it twice per day. Mm -hmm. um, you can push for more if you want, but it's essentially the best thing for clearing your skin, recovering muscle, getting deeper sleep, and boosting your energy and mood for the day. Go ahead and check them out. Use code 2AM to save. And last but not least, one of the most powerful sleep concoctions on the market mm -hmm. from portal mm -hmm. magnesium uh, glycinate l-theanine apigenin it's uh it's really powerful and it'll take you to another dimension when you're uh, asleep so i love it code 2am save some money on that all right without further ado let's get started <laughs> Stop it. So kind. It's just us. Come okay. on. Can't boast, a, can't boast us up that much. Not at all, man. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, thank you, but I'm humbled by this uh, applause here. Just an know, unbelievable applause. I mean, I don't do too well with attention, you know. I heard a couple of unique voices in there as well. Yeah. Who do you think uh, that was? Um, I think definitely one of them was um, Miley Cyrus, I think. Miley Cyrus with the guy voice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah! Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Well, welcome back, guys, to a, another beautiful episode. It is a beautiful day here in Southern California. A little bit dry. But a little bit dry. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've been feeling it in my uh, lips a lot. Is it technically the Santa Ana wind time? Uh, I mean, when is it not the Santa, An Santa Ana wind time? It's been like that literally all year, I think. Has it? For the most part. I think it just kind of like diminishes during the summer. But hmm. we're in a new season now, so I think this is probably when it ignites. It starts. Yeah. And it doesn't stop. Well, it's cer certainly not igniting fires. Mm -hmm. um, is it? If not? you guys are unfamiliar with the fire in Tustin. Oh, my God. God. Oh, see, I, I see what you did there. You see what I did there. Well, I'm picking <laughs> up on your skill. Don't worry. But yeah, I think uh, I think those hangers were actually from World War II. Like yeah. those were some old school hangers. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of uh, Marine Corps, uh, basically, that used to work there. Hmm. A lot of people on social media would be like, I used to work there. Interesting. And this is kind of like it's an iconic piece of Tustin. And to see it just kind of burn over the past three days is insane. Obviously not from natural sources. Like, this is... No, this is an insane kind of burn. It's, it's hard to burn. Dude, have you seen how huge they are? Yeah. Mostly made of concrete? Exactly. So, I, I do get the memes, you know? The Irvine Company's celebrating right now. <laughs> popping champagne. <laughs> yeah, dude. But it's just like, uh, something fishy's going on here, you know? Yeah, I'm not sure. No one is really sure. And it's just devastating. How long have they been up for? Like they, well, at least uh, until the point that they close them, they've been up for a while. They have. They've just been sitting. We vacantly. can accurately bring that up, um, because, I mean, since I was a kid, dude, I've been seeing it. Um, By the way, since the, these are old school hangers, yeah. um, 
I read a news article that said that there's they tested it out and there's potential concern of asbestos contamination. Oh, so when you consider the fires, that's not a really great situation to be in. Yeah. So, you know, within the next few days, if you're in the SoCal area, stay inside for the most part. Ooh, yeah, it was built in 1942, so it's been sitting there. It's been sitting there pretty. Oh, that's... Dude, I mean, it's just seeing a fire collapse a building or a hangar like that. Something that's iconic to the people of the city and to the people of the county. Uh, pretty devastating in its own unique way, you know? I've always wanted to go inside. I have been there once. You've been inside? I don't remember. No, no, I haven't. I've been to the to the location. Well, I mean, we always drive around that location. Yeah, for sure. And there, there were always there were planes there, from what I remember. Hmm. Um, abandoned. It's just an abandoned place. I, I remember when I was into like um, exploring and that kind of stuff. I that was one of the locations that popped up online. It's mm. Like, oh, you should explore this like historic place. You know that no one when no one is there, realistically. I think there were security guards at certain times, but that's it. You could probably and, get in pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. It's just flat ground. Hmm. So, I don't know. I felt a connection there when it was burning. And it was <laughs> just a connection. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then I was just like, well, most articles were claiming that it was like, um, I don't know, uh, homeless people or looters. And I'm like, what? What are they looting? I mean, just the average person. How the hell are you going to? cause a massive blaze to that a three-day blaze <laughs> by the way from what i saw like the blaze was more so towards the middle of the building mm -hmm. it didn't engulf the bottom parts of the building towards yeah. the middle but it was only at the top i know i know what it was what it was hamas <gasps> how could they not those rockets the tustin fire <laughs> <God. laughs> just to sit, i don't know <laughs> just, that's the joke lately <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know we didn't kill Harambe. We finally know who killed Harambe. The, you haven't seen that joke? We didn't kill Harambe? Was yeah. that actually a meme? Yeah, it was like... It Hamas was, killed yeah. Harambe? It was Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> like, people were just saying random shit like that, you know? Oh, and, man. Um, yeah, I'm not laughing at any tragedy, but I'm... No. You know, just the fact that people are still able to meme is crazy. Yeah, people will meme at any situation. Mm -hmm. you think, of, think of the worst situations in history. There are memes out there yeah. for every single one of them, so... Insanity is the theme of this week. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. But uh, yeah, what else has been happening? How's uh, baby life? That's good. Just chilling. It's good. It's demanding, yeah. as as it should be. To be honest, like, mm -hmm. there's no there's no such thing as uh, raising an infant in an easy fashion. I guess mm -hmm. that makes sense. Like it, it's always going to be hard, mm -hmm. and so you just have to learn how to navigate that. I mean, you seem like you... You make it look easy lately. Do I? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm, I'm very grateful to have an amazing fiancé. So mm -hmm. we talk about a lot of stuff. Our communication is on point for the most part. Um, the, the thing that's tough for me is just staying inside a lot. Mm -hmm. You're not used to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a man thing. I'm kind of like a hybrid. I can definitely be a homebody. But it's tough not being able to... To go out as much as you would like. Yeah. The freedom of like when you want. Yeah. Type of thing. And and the way I'm feeling is nothing compared to the way that my fiance is feeling because she has a 24-7 hour job. Like 24-7 job. Mm -hmm. Like she has to be yeah. on the on the ball all the time. Pretty much. That's uh it's it's pretty Yeah, it's really demanding. It's you have no choice. You know, you feel like this is your life now. Mm -hmm. That's it. So yeah, props to all the mothers out there because that is some, uh, that's a tough job. Yeah, probably change your perspective on mothers in general. Huh? Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you appreciate yeah, it a little bit damn. more, you know? My mom went through this. Shit. To raise me? Yeah. And here I am complaining about how her food tastes. God, Come man. on, bro. Idiots. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I can't wait to uh, try that, you know? Try that? Yeah. And just yeah. send it back for so, warranty, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just try it. You know, <laughs> Let's get a little uh, sample of uh, what it's like to be a father mm -hmm. for once. Uh, because it's so easy to just, you know, talk, experience like you know it, you know. But then you haven't actually been through the trial of it. So it's like. Yeah, which is why I've always 
found it funny to see uh, people on social media talking about how they would raise their child. Oh, oh really? Oh. You're a health influencer and you're talking about how you oh, yeah. would raise your child. Yeah, let's see how you do when you're uh, running on two hours of sleep. <laughs> like, it's great to prepare. I I'm not going to knock somebody for preparing and, you know, feeding from glass bottles instead of plastic. These more holistic principles, but keep the keep the opinions down a little bit until you actually have a child. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's also some exciting things for you. Oh, a hundred. No, most of it's exciting. Like, I don't want to make it sound like it's not. Um, it's just tough. It's one of the tougher things that you'll experience in life, especially mm -hmm. for for um, the man and being able to provide and protect. But I do, like I said, I do think that a lot of the burden or a lot of the, not burden, a lot of the difficulty is on the mother's shoulders mm -hmm. because, like I said, 24-7. Yeah. At least in the beginning. That's insane. And that's why God created them with the most love. Right? Once you have a child, yeah. it's just like... Screw everything else I knew. Mm -hmm. And that instinct, too, that intuition. Have you heard stories of, like, that... Um, I think there was one where the mom was on the second story of her house, inside the second story, and then her child was outside, like, literally about to jump into the pool. Mm -hmm. Small child would have drowned. But for some reason, she had that instinct, and she just knew exactly where the baby was. What the Like, hell? that's that's crazy level intuition. That's insane. That's like an Apple Vision Pro before it was a thing, you know? Like, it's just... Better than Apple Vision Pro, dude. Yeah, it's, it's the vision. It's like Spider-Man. You get those tingly senses. It's like then... a vision for your heart. You know, you're like, oh. mm -hmm. yeah. It's literally a spider tingle. Spider tingle? <laughs> oh, spider tingle. <laughs> Sp <laughs> tingle spider me, oh, spider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it makes sense because we know that there are neurons within the gut. So the gut-brain connection is, oh, yeah, is yeah. one pathway. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think we've all had some sort of something happen to us where it's like you really feel that effect, you know? Of mm -hmm. your stomach connected to your brain. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. The human body is more complicated than you think. You, you, you know, we know, we know some things about the human body. You know, I wouldn't say we know everything, but it's like, even if we did claim to know everything, there's still a lot more you don't know. Oh, there's so much, dude. It's complicated, you know? Especially like Western medicine, they think they have a full understanding of the body. Yeah. No, they do not. Bro, like, you could just go down, like, oh, you know, screw everything else and the functionality. I'm just going to go through the functionality of, like, the spine. Mm -hmm. And that has its own rabbit hole, you know? And uh, when I found out I had two discs in my neck, I was following the process of how degeneration happens because of cell phones, computers, like, that kind of stuff, right? And it would, with x-rays, man, you can see how it's affecting these little air pockets and um, just the way it's constructed. Mm-hmm just becomes compressed, and that becomes your new normal. And reversing that requires surgery if it gets to a certain point. I think if it gets to, like, stage four. Yeah, it's only worst-case scenario. Yeah, worst-case yeah. scenario, which means you need to pay attention to your posture in mm -hmm. general. You know? Especially the older you get. Yeah. Dude, you, like, you want to talk about how amazing the human body is? Mm -hmm. This, so what I'm about to, what I'm, what I'm about to explain right now is why I'm such a big advocate of light environment and sunlight. Mm. So when sunlight hits your skin, there is, um, it activates a, a gene within every human being known as POMC, pro opio melanocortin pathway. Okay. POMC creates um, pro opio melanocortin, which is a protein that has multiple peptides attached to it. Mm. So when sunlight hits your skin, these peptides go to work. Mm. And these are some of the most uh, powerful peptides that, the, that we know of. So. You have alpha MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, beta MSH, gamma MSH, beta endorphin, mm -hmm. which is an opioid peptide. So every time you're out in the sun, this is why we're biologically driven to be addicted to sunlight because we get a, basically a hit of opioids yeah. endogenously. And then you have like leptin, um, CLIP, ACTH, I'm abbreviating them, but a lot of these peptides, actually all of them are responsible for appetite regulation, where fat is stored on your body, um, satiety signals. So from that perspective, I think we could actually solve the obesity, diabetes, and largely chronic disease problem just from taking a, a proper approach to light. Mm. That's, That's crazy. crazy, bro. Yeah, that is crazy. This takes me back to like last year during the winter when I was um, addicted to sunlight. Mm -hmm. Right. And it never stopped. And I remember the beginning of it was like, I didn't really care to see the sun. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, I'll see it passing through or going in and out or whatever the hell, you know? <laughs> but I never, like, sat there and just, like, took in the sun. 
unless I was at the beach or some occasion where I was eating tacos outdoors, you know? Yeah. And then uh, I remember just, like, one day, it was freezing cold. I just took off my shirt, and just, I'm, like, freezing, and I sit in the sun. And I'm like, okay, UV index is, like, two or three. It's not Nothing really crazy, right? But I'm still, like, ten minutes in, I'm like, I'm getting this warmth, and I'm like, this is just a feeling of, like, wow, it's, it's cold in my surrounding, but I'm getting this warmth from this source, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what grew me into enjoying it. And ever since then, I haven't stopped. And it feels like if I don't hit the sun, like it's a tanning bed, if I don't hit the sun, <laughs> I'm just, I feel like something's mything, missing, you know? Mything? Mything, yeah. yeah. I was gonna... <laughs> Great mything of yeah. the sun. The myth. <laughs> I miss you. But no, it's 100% true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me give you a, a quick example of how modern society manipulates our biology and creates problems, especially with chronic disease. So I mentioned ACTH and CLIP. Mm. Those two peptides, ACTH is responsible for the secretion of cortisol. Okay. And once you raise cortisol, you also uh, raise blood sugar and insulin. Yeah, which is stress, essentially. Yes. Yeah. And then CLIP is also what, what's known as an insulin secretagogue, meaning mm. it stimulates the production of insulin from the pancreas. And what we know actually through research is that isolated artificial blue light hijacks the POMC gene mm-hmm. and only stimulates ACTH and CLIP to then raise blood sugar and insulin, here's the kicker, without a single calorie of food consumed. What the hell? So therefore you can make the assumption that a lot of the obesity and diabetes problem is a light problem. And once you fix the light environment, then your body stops um, getting hijacked in that sense. So you, you can raise yeah. your insulin and blood sugar without a single piece of food. In an ideal world, this would be before obesity, right? Not your obese. And then you're like, okay, let me start hitting the sun. Both. It, it'll, I mean, yes, both. But I think it's much quicker if you do it before, right? It, it's better if you do it before, obviously. Like but. you'll just save your future self rather than you're already doomed. And then you start. So like, I, I, would it have a similar effect? Like would you actually start shredding or yeah. shedding weight? Yeah, we, we know that natural blue light from the sun actually shrinks fat cells and makes fat cells more efficient at burning fat. Damn. Just an example of how, and I've received this from many people. Like, yeah. if people come to me when I suggest sun, sunbathing and they're like, why is it that I feel leaner? I look leaner. And when I go to test myself, I'm, I, I, I actually am leaner. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a slimmer guy. And I thought it was just like, you know, based on me, it was probably easier to just shed fat. But... I don't know. I'm using like probably the example of like someone that's like 230, you know, sit in the sun every day. Um, it's more effective and, for them. I don't know. But the w- see, that would have to be paired with not eating the same, though. Yes, you, you would have to go to a more whole food diet. Mm-hmm. Of course, you can't fix your light environment and then eat like shitty and expect hack, results. That's what I'm saying. It's not like I'm going to sit here and consume like four Big Macs four no. times a day and then be like, all right. Hitting the sun, though, so... We're <laughs> no, you, you need to have both nutrition and yeah. light environment dialed in. That's insane, dude. Uh, what's crazy to me is um, even more than light, I would say. Or light probably plays a part in this. Uh, epigenetics. Oh, massive. Dude. Just... Uh, I mean, it's been a hot topic the past couple of days. Um, but it's insane how it's able to change. Or um, epigenetics are passed down obviously from generations and you are able to feel like the sadness of your ancestors or the sadness Mm -hmm. of your grandparents or whatever it's kind of like passed down to you Mm -hmm. which is why you feel the way you do and everyone has their own line of that you know Mm -hmm. there's a little bit more to it but yeah basically basically right genes epigenetics lifestyle all that stuff yeah it's just one unit so like for example uh there was like one trauma in the family okay and your great grandfather experienced it. You pass it down to your grandfather, and then your grandfather pass it down to your father, and then your father pass it down to you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, from my understanding, it's it's obviously different percentages, but the fact that it's like coded, that it's your code technically, yeah, explains a lot of the things why uh, explains a lot of the things about yourself and the way you operate, and the way you feel. Mm-hmm. Dude, DNA Crazy. is the most complex information gathering system ever. Yeah. And it makes me think about, like, okay, why do I like parks? 
Like, I fucking love parks. You know what I mean? I don't know <laughs> I why. I love parks, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, I go there, and I'm just like, dude, like, I feel like I'm myself, you know? Mm -hmm. But what makes you feel like yourself? That's the thing. There has to be some sort of code here. Because I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, what are we going to do at a park? We don't care about a park, you know? Yeah. But to me, it's like, oh, it's the best place on earth. So it's like, you start to see this difference between people, right? And you're like, why? Why am I coded this way? Mm. And it's like, it makes you think through epigenetics, what the hell happened back then, you know? Yeah. Weird. I wonder if there's more to it than just genes and epigenetics as yeah, well. Like, there has to be. Why am I a creative at mm -hmm. heart? Like, why was I born around that? And why was my dad doing that? And then why was his dad, like, a creative too? Like, he was a good painter and a good artist. You can't and just chalk it up poet. to genes, yeah. Like, I don't know, dude. It's just kind of crazy, you know? That's more of the spiritual realm, though, right? I don't know. Is it? Or I think do we so. just not know too much about it? I, I do have a problem with people saying that, oh, creativity is only this, you know, this certain connection of patterns within your brain and the way neurons fire. I, I don't, I think that's a little bit a part of the story, but I don't think that's no, no, the I'm full saying story. being obsessed with it. You know? Like, why are you obsessed with it straight off the bat? No, no, no. Like, it is your, it is your obsession as in it is your hobby. It is your moving compass. It is everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you ever think that maybe it's just because you unconsciously learned that from your father? You were just watching him do his thing a lot? I don't know. I don't, maybe it could just be the influence of things that I did as a hobby. I don't know. Could be. Weird. Hmm. Very weird, right? Yeah. Like, uh, from what I know, your father was a coach. Yeah. So oh, that, that's fun. That, I, straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, you're into sports. Yeah. You're competitive in that field physically. Uh, you played soccer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, it's kind of like, when I think of Zade, like, he has this, like, sports compass. You know? <laughs> like, it's just, like, points towards the other way. And I'm like, let me document this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Have you ever looked into uh, numerology? Numerology. Um, is this, this the study of numbers? Yeah. And what they mean. Yeah. There's um there's this uh, guy on Twitter, Gary's the numbers guy. He's more of an abrasive type of personality, but he talks really in depth about numerology. And I did I did my own numer numerology. So basically you take like your birth date, um, and then you add the numbers up in a certain sequence, and then that leads to life path numbers or master numbers. Okay. And then these master numbers have like paths, basically? Or it kind of assumes what Basically, like, the, so for example, I'm a 33 life path. Yeah. So there's the, the master numbers are 11, 22, and 33. Those are extremely rare. Mm -hmm. I'm a 33 life path. Okay. And then you were like, oh my God. Right. But what's like crazy, okay. like, I didn't come into this like, oh my God, I believe this. Yeah. I just started to look a little bit more deeper into it. And once I dug into 33 LP, I'm like, the 33 LP is a master teacher, master healer. Yeah. You were like, oh, snap. Yeah, exactly. Coaching. Exactly. Damn, it was that yeah. kind of stuff that, that got, really got me on the path. It's not like I follow it like a religion, but yeah, it's yeah. just interesting to see, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of cool things, I think. Um, some things are like, it, it's so accurate that you're like, how this could not be uh, Dude, Gary, coincidence. Dude, Gary will go into history and he will be like, Hitler was this, Mussolini was this, and he'll make like these fucking generalizations that dictators are a certain life path. Number. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy stuff, but... That's insane. Yeah. He's a master of something. Master of something. 11, 22, 33. Enzo's at 22. No way. Damn, fool. He's following the footsteps of his father. Some rare life paths out there. My father was. <laughs> My father. A health coach. <laughs> and a fiend. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know anymore having some weird dreams like what uh i think it's probably some because of influence of like movies or shit but uh one of them was like i was in a bathtub just chilling okay just bathing which i normally never do you know <laughs> i just shower and get the hell out it's a shower guy yeah and i'm like okay this is already interesting and then it was a blank bathroom no window like nothing it was just white it was just a bathtub. Like, no texture, no tile, nothing? Yeah, and I'm like, why am I... Like, you know in your dream when you're like, why am I dreaming about this? 
But at the same time, it, the dream just keeps going. Oh, when you're in the dream? Yeah. I can't recall a time where I've experienced that. <laughs> where you have like this meta consciousness within the dream. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, why am I dreaming about this? Whatever, you know, like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was interesting. And then I just look up. And because everything is white, there's just this massive spider. And, like, I'm like, okay, I hope it doesn't fall on me. And then I wake up and it falls on you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's just, like, it's weird. So dreams are just weird, man. Don't forget to take Portal because I think that's kind of what influenced this. <laughs> the subconscious is crazy. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know at all. Hmm. Um, yeah, jacket season's coming, though. My favorite jacket season is coming. Layer up. It's already getting pretty cold. Yeah. Lined up a bunch of stuff in my cart. Just waiting to check out. What's the worst jacket you've ever seen? The worst jacket? Uh, I would say probably the people that wear like the Matrix leather jackets that go down to your freaking ankle. <laughs> thinking like that's hip. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. <laughs> Slicked back hair, wearing glasses. Oh, no. I don't know, man. The you don't see too many of those. No, no. But when you do, you're just like, hmm. <laughs> did you come? Did you just come out of an audition or something? Yeah, you almost want to like touch the mirror, see if it like ripples. <laughs> <laughs> now we're chilling. He just looks at you. What are you doing? Oh, my bad. Sorry, dude. Yeah, man. All I can think about is how much hungrier I've been lately. I think that's because of the gym. I don't know. hundred percent. Is it? Yeah. Resistance Is it crazy training. how like your muscles like, please feed me like, and your stomach's like, bingo, let's go. Mm-hmm. Even though it was the same stomach. <sighs> That's why when somebody asks like, what, what supplements do you recommend to, to gain more of an appetite? Uh, food. Lift weights. <laughs> yeah. Lift weights hard. Well, oh yeah, I guess. What supplements do you recommend though? After food. Sunlight. Yeah, sunlight. Right. I knew you'd say that. Um, my recommendation is glycine. Glycine's good, yeah. I think glycine's really good. For collagen. That. Yeah. Ooh, collagen. Yeah. Collagen's a semiconductor mm-hmm. in the body. Yeah, so when you pair it with whey, beautiful results. You go way high. Way. <laughs> <laughs> way up in weight, for sure. Uh, <laughs> way I'm, up in weight. Yeah, dude. I, I'm low-key excited. Like, I want to see where my body's going to go with this. You know? Yeah. Full recovery is done, officially. Uh, oh, you're fully recovered, yeah, finally. Fully, it's been like yeah, seven like, years. Bro, it's been two years and a half. My God. It's insane, dude. Injury after injury after so many goddamn things happening. And, you uh, wake up. You, you, like Sometimes you're the type where you just wake up and you have like a broken shoulder, broken arm. Like, what the fuck happened Yeah, remember that? <laughs> that was annoying, dude. Just like dislocate a shoulder real quick while sleeping. That wasn't cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there you go. If this is the doctor, yeah, you need like six weeks. And I'm like, oh my God, bro. And then six weeks wasn't a thing. It would take way longer. Not when you have vital red light, baby. Yeah, I, that's helped me a lot, honestly. Um, have you heard of this thing of, uh, there's some influencers out there who actually follow urine therapy? What the hell is that? It's urine That's exactly what it sounds like. What do you think it is? You uh, submerge yourself and drink it? Drink your own piss. Oh, what the hell is the point of that? I first came across this from a certified health nut, Troy Casey. He's like, yeah, I've been drinking my piss therapeutically <laughs> since 2005. I'm like, like, what the? Therapeutically, bro. What? I have not dived into it. I don't support it. Just Mountain Valley. Like, what the hell? What, what is the point of that? What are the benefits they claim? You know? Better yet, is there is there a single animal in... The animal kingdom that drinks its own piss. I mean, if they didn't know, probably, but... But they know. They have instinctual mechanisms. That's why, like, that's why dogs are typically afraid of their own shit. Um, I would say probably pigs. <laughs> I mean, pigs, like... They don't drink their own piss. I mean, they live in their own shit, though. Like, yeah, but, I mean, the shit is just, like, it's manure at the end of the day. It's mixed up with the mud, and eventually it becomes dirt. Yeah, but they're eating it. Like, Are they eating it? Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem with pig, bro. It's like the dirtiest meat. Hmm. Uh, I'm saying, man. Ugh. What if you got pasture raised pork? Well, obviously it's hot. Dude, just think of the That's routine of the pasture raised. 
No, legitimately, like you, you let pigs forage and eat acorns and all this other stuff. It just is. I don't know. I think it has to do with a lot of its internal bacteria that's the problem. The enzymes within it. Hmm. So I don't think it's... It's one of the only animals that it's not how it's raised. Because, like, obviously how it's raised is even worse, you know, but it can get worse. But I think that's the main issue. Chicken's even worse in this country. Yeah. Dude, oh, I hate... Dude. Con conventional chicken dude, is disgusting. If you guys want a life hack, go get a pass for Restaurant Depot. You don't have to pay the yearly. Um, and you can... If you have the storage for it, get 40 whole chickens, I think, or 20 whole chickens for, like, 40 bucks, and they're halal. So pasture-raised? Halal chicken, bro. So it's not mass-produced. So they do run out, you know? That's how you know. That's a good problem. If you run out of chicken, just wait for the next batch. You know what I mean? Dude, like... Just conventional, if you look at conventional chicken in a package, mm -hmm. go to Stater Brothers. Yeah. It is some of the most horrifying looking stuff. Bro, it's like veiny and like flexing too. It's like, yeah, check out my wing. You know? By the way, I have a story with Logan. Yeah. Okay, we went to Joshua Tree one time. We stayed in an Airbnb. The hell does this have to do with chicken? It's not. We went to the local <laughs> Stater Brothers. Okay. <laughs> and for some reason, we looked at this chicken and we actually bought it. Like it was a... It was, it's it just conventional chicken? packaged chicken, okay? Okay. You know, it's like pure white, looks like something out of a dystopian movie. Yeah. We took it back to the Airbnb, ended up cooking it. And when I tell you the stench to come off of this thing, we, we actually made bowls, but I think Logan tried it once and was like, nah, fuck this. Like, I, I, not, I don't even recall if I could even try it. You never want to risk it with meat, ever. Not with that meat. No. That's what I'm saying, man. If you go to Restaurant Depot, I swear to God, when you try this chicken, it's like you haven't eaten chicken in this country in, like, 18 years. Yeah, pa pasture-raised chicken is really good. Drumsticks? Ooh. Ooh. Novin? I'm more of a breast kind of guy. Oh, you're a breast kind of guy? Yeah. Just love that kind of meat, you know? It's good. It's tender. Do you prefer white meat or dark meat? White. That's interesting. Mm. I hate white meat. Really? I love dark meat. Oh, you, oh you're talking about, like, meat meat, like, in general. Like, beef. No, even from the chicken, like, they're white oh, parts the of dark the meat, meat. Dark Okay, parts. so that's why you're, like, more thigh. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Like them thighs. Yes, sir. No, I'm, I'm not really a fan. I would always go for a, um, okay, how about this? Are you a chicken or a beef kind of guy? Beef. 100%, right? 100%. Dude, same, unless the chicken's really good. Then it's a good, like, it's, it's just in between. Like, I love both equally, if the chicken's good. What if it's best quality beef, best quality chicken, side by side? You have to choose. It just depends. Then I'd ask myself, what do I feel like? Okay. Honestly. This guy, intuitive eating guy. Yeah. I like that. I'm a moody eater, bro. Like today, I just felt like fried zucchini for some goddamn reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's so good, you know? There's also, you know, I, I spoke about urine therapy. There's also a um, subsection of the health realm mm -hmm. that likes raw meat. They eat raw meat. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. Before you go there, though. I just want to say something about uh, urine therapy. Okay. Nasty ass shit. Um, just imagine the routine of this. Like, <laughs> like how your week looks, you know, as on urine therapy. Oh, I had two glasses of Mountain Valley today, and I cannot wait to just piss in cups. Wash it down today. with my urine. Yeah. You coming happy hour today? Nah, man, I got to go home. Just got to empty out my bowel. <laughs> <laughs> you can just imagine some poor dude who's like so desperate to see some health <laughs> results. He's just in the corner of his kitchen, just pissing in bottles and storing what the them. the hell is this? For you the next with, morning. Imagine you live with someone too. They're like, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. In the bro. kitchen, just squatting down. Well, the, by that logic, I'm like, if you guys ascribe to urine therapy, why don't you get into shit therapy? Start <sighs> eating your own crap. I don't know, bro. Ew, <laughs> dude, but that's like bacteria and digested food. Just pick the corn and eat it, bro. Just pick the <laughs> corn and eat it. Oh. Oh. Uh, I like painting visuals. Um, but yeah, that's just, uh, just imagine the routine and how stupid and ridiculous that sounds, you know? Just drink water, man. <laughs> yeah, just, just drink some water. Trace Valley minerals, water. we're good. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, raw beef? Raw liver? Raw meat. Uh, raw meat in general. Okay. There are some dishes like tartare. Was it beef tartare? Uh, it's technically raw. Yeah. There's also like um, raw kebbeh in Syrian. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. 
which is raw meat as well. I think it's raw meat mixed with raw dough, I'd say. Hmm. Like beef dough. I don't know what, how the they hell they make the it, argument but. that it's more bioavailable for the body. And I'm not sure about that because, uh, you know, we, human beings have been cooking their food for a long, long time. So, mm. I mean, the first one of the first discoveries was fire, I believe. Yeah. Then we, shortly after we cooked our meat yeah. on that fire. Mm hmm. Uh, that's, I don't know, from everything I've been told and everything that I've kind of searched up, there's just a lot of hazard behind eating raw meat. Is it or not? It just I haven't looked right. into the stats. I mean, before I was hip to raw milk and we did that raw milk episode, I wasn't, I didn't know the statistics on it. I yeah. mean, the CDC quite literally provided, provided us research that I think you have more, you have a higher chance of dying in a plane crash than attaining any disease or sickness from raw milk yeah of course yeah and getting talking about like how many other countries are drinking raw milk just fine right yeah so oh yeah it just doesn't sit right either just raw meat man i can't even eat raw fish personally i love i love raw fish yeah like poke but it has to be high quality yeah honestly i prefer to just buy a wild caught and then make it at home hmm Nah, I like cook. Just cook, cook, cook. I mean, cook. mostly cook, to be honest, yeah. yeah. Can't do that. Just don't fry your shit, you know? <laughs> Just don't fry your shit in canola like, oil. <laughs> dude, because, like, I get it, man. Like, olive oil is not gonna, it's not really, it's not good for deep frying. No. It's not at all, you know? It's a different kind of oil. The way it acts is different. Um, But. It's more delicate. Dude, when I see things like cottonseed sunflower that's when i'm like dude like not even vegetable bro cotton seed it's crazy just look it up just look how it looks where it comes from yeah look how they manufacture it that's it goes disgusting. through like a 24 step process that's disgusting that's as synthetic as you can possibly imagine yeah and you're just like mm, chicken nuggets mm. Mm. lays potato chips mm. baby chicks that have been grinded in the meat grinder <sighs> mm. It's disgusting. You know that little crunchy? <laughs> Coated with cottonseed oil. Yeah. Next time you get a crunchy part in your chicken, just know that's the beak. And you'll never eat it again. <laughs> Fortunately, that's not true. You know, actually, I've talked to a lot of people about this. And it's uh, through the McChicken theory. Okay, The McChicken theory is people stopped eating like chicken in general once they get that little um, crunchy, weird part in their chicken. Like, here they are eating chickens for 10 years. Mm. They're like, mm, this is so good and soft and chewy. Mm. And then one day it just goes, and you're just like, oh. you spit it out. And you're like. Because you have no idea what it is. Yeah. That's and you're like, wait, maybe the, the theory about McDonald's is all correct. Oh, no. And like all these, like, you get washed away with all these thoughts about McDonald's. And you're just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not eating this again. You just don't know. That's what got me to stop eating McDonald's, by the way. Really? Yeah. Have you seen, like, just open up a Mc, McNugget. Just look at it. And then go grab a chicken, all right? Any chicken you please, okay? Open it up. Just tear up the breast. What the hell is there? String. Well, by the way, a, a McNugget is not just chicken. It's like a whole bunch of other ingredients It's with disgusting. It. And we're talking about McNuggets in general, you know? I can't speak Any for all nuggets, fast food. Bro. Can't Wendy's, speak for all come on, it's the same shit. No, no, no. What do you mean, no, 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 no? Get, we might do this on the fucking pod, bro, and just <laughs> get every single nugget from every joint. I'm actually kind of down. Split them up in half. Be such we'll degenerate difference. behavior. There's a huge difference. McNuggets in general, and just be based off of how McDonald's operates, okay? They're not just Idaho potatoes. They're a specific potato that can't have any black spots, and they have to be extra long. So oh, think wow. of the pesticides that they're spraying on this crap for, on its own little farm that's reserved for McDonald's. For it to come out perfect across, not the United States, the world. It has to be golden yellow. The world. And extra long. It has to taste identical every single time. That's insane. Did you know that a Chick-fil-A sandwich has over 100 ingredients? A uh, Chick-fil-A sandwich? Like a Chick-fil-A, oh, the like regular, deluxe. like... Yeah, a chicken sandwich, okay. Over 100 ingredients. What? Yeah. Uh, that has to come from herbs. No, f fuck no, it's not herbs, bro. <laughs> what do you mean herbs? I don't so, know what you're talking about. Paul Saladino, you know Paul, um, what's his name? Carnivore MD? Sure, yeah. 
he goes to these, he goes to like Costco, picks up the Carnival of Warhol, you know, all that stuff. He goes to fast food restaurants too. And apparently he looked up the ingredients for like the typical standard Chick-fil-A sandwich. And it was over a hundred ingredients. Okay. Obviously not. Th- when we think of ingredients as liberal, not, liberal. not healthy ingredients, synthetic garbage, like ingredients. added shit, like how it's cooked and stuff. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought you were talking about like bun lettuce. Uh, I'm like, what? There's only four ingredients. In that. Yeah, what sandwich are you gonna come out with a hundred ingredients? <laughs> you know, Pepper Jack has ninety of them. What the hell? But my problem is like, for example, anything deep fried. You just you don't know if a rat went into the deep fryer, submerged itself accidentally, and then just got absolutely cooked. Again, you don't no. know that about cans you, that you drink out of. It could be a healthy drink. You don't. Yeah. It's just a. This is the problem with everything. Okay, you got to think deeply about like where you're going with this. And one of the thoughts that immediately occurs to my mind is the dispenser drinks. Mm. How often are they cleaned? Aren't these metal pipes? It's a, good, they just, it's a good question. They just shut them off and then that's it? Ice cream machine. So next time you go to like a joint that's been there for like, I don't know, 72 years, <laughs> and it's the same old like, oh, they have the old school Coke. Oh, no, don't, no. Just avoid it, you know? Yeah, no. Not because of corn syrup. This, this is worse. This is like, what's in that pipe? There's just black mold. Like, do they even clean it? I don't know. I mean, they would have to. Health inspectors come through, but right? Does, uh, yeah, but do they inspect the damn pipe? How would they do Maybe that? Maybe they do it, like, once every couple of years? I don't know, man. Just with metal and rust, I cannot trust, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> metal and rust, I cannot trust. Oh. Oh. Gross. That's some nasty shit, dude. I can't yeah, dude. I, I do not want to ever. Yeah, just, just you know, it's those kinds of thoughts that occur to me sometimes, and I'm like, oh god, did I really just take a sip out of that? Am I dying? <laughs> take a sip out of your Coca Cola and you find a yeah. rat. Just imagine that, though. Imagine life if you never bought food that someone made for you, and you went straight animal. You slapped it on an iron, right, on an iron uh, press something right and you just or you put it in the oven and that's it it was like one step yeah. find the source of meat buy it that's it special no connection to that you. food man yeah and you did that every single day for like I don't know, seven years you know and you pick your own berries you, you would be own. so healthy i wonder how i would feel you know you'd feel amazing all the time that's how you'd feel yeah but i want to know like i want to feel it like i want to be like oh damn so we're going to start up a 2 a.m. ranch. <laughs> we're going to have our livestock, sheep, yeah. bison, cows, llamas even, mm. depending on how extreme you want to take it. Goats. Goats. We're going to have raw milk section. We're going to have pasture-raised, grass-fed, all mm. nine yards. Yeah, so we're going to have, like, that's where the Wagyu ribeye. Like, pasture-raised eggs. Filet mignon comes from. Yeah. And even better, because I saw... Shout out to Dr. Jack Cruz for mm. showing this picture on Twitter. He went to Portugal, and apparently these people in Portugal bathe their meat. They, like, you know how they hang the meat up from the ceiling? They bathe their meat in red light. No way. Because apparently that makes the meat better. What? That's crazy. I've never so heard of gonna that. So we're going to deck it out like that, bro. I have never heard of that, dude. And we definitely will be using vital red light just for that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It has been fun. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, before we head out, I would just like to say, oh yeah, it's been a fine and dandy episode today. Please make sure you check out our sponsors and use code 2AM at checkout to save on any of these. Oh, you know where to catch us. We're on Spotify, on the 2AM podcast. Go ahead and visit our website at the 2AM podcast.com. We're available on Twitter at the 2AM pod and Instagram at the 2AM podcast. Please don't forget to rate us five stars. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Peace.